Let me die alone. It's, it's more like a plea. A sad plea. Let me die alone. I don't want to die alone. By John K. Carbo. So let me progress. Yeah, just a brief biography of the playwright. Carbo. You know, we don't have much, we don't know much about him. But we know that he was born in Sierra Leone in 1964. He died in 1992. Dots the eyes and cross the T's. You know how old he was. He attended the Prince of Wales Secondary School in Freetown. Where's Freetown? That is Sierra Leone. Together with Clifford Graber, another literati. John Carball founded Songhai Theatre, known as Shegure Players, and Balangi Dramatic Group, founded in 1974. He was a theater artist. He had a flair for everything theater. You understand? He was into play. He was into acting. And yet, I made research and I discovered he was a very close friend of Wale Shoinka. They were really close. He, he even schooled in Nigeria for a while. Very close to Shoinka. You know, they were all theater artists. They, of course, Shoinka is still a theater artist. One of our legends of literature. So that is that about our prolific writer John Colosa Carbo. They shot it as John K. Carbo. So let's make progress. For this class, we are introducing the book. So we began with the brief history of the playwright. Now you know the playwright is from Sierra Leone, and of course, you know, most times it's good to understand the psychology of the so that we can be able to psychoanalyze the text. You understand the background. You understand the background, the mood. He wrote this text. Are you getting it? Let's make progress. Uh -huh. It is probably let me die alone that assured Cargo's reputation, meaning that it that wasn't his only book. Yes, he had written a number of them. It wasn't, but this one was um, intriguing. This one was really historic, really historic. You understand? The entire Sierra Leone embraced this book, and I'm about to tell you why. That is the background of the text, briefly. It is a meticulous. A meticulously researched and well-constructed script. His early death was a tremendous blow to the development of dramatic literature in his country. It was. It was, guys. It was. It's, he died pretty early. 1962 and died 1992. It wasn't palatable because he was just at the peak of his career. Imagine, you know how old Shrinka is. You know how old, 70s, 80s, 70s, 80s. And you know how many books he wrote in his, you know, over 60, in his 60s. Imagine if Colossa got to that age. Imagine how many books would have been graced, been privileged to study. But he left us with this one, right? That is one thing about literature. You can, it transfers from generation to generation. 1992 to date is being... 28 years, but see, let me die alone is still prominent. Let's make progress. Okay. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Let me die alone now, the setting at the background of the play. You all know settings. I am not going to remind you of settings. You are in SS2, you are big boys and girls. Let Me Die Alone is a historical biography based play which mirrors the life and times of a legendary woman in Sierra Leone known as Madame Yoko, who lived between 1847 and 1906. Take notes. This book is historical. It is a biography of Madame Yoko. You understand? Written in a, written in a play form. Madame Yoko is not a fictional character. Definitely not. Madame Yoko is a non-fictional character. Her real name was Madame Yoko. She, she lived between 19, 1847 and 1906. She lived for a long time. So she is not a fictional character. So this is the reason why the people of Sierra Leone embraced this text. It was just seeing their history. In print, in their history, in writing, are you getting it? Now, still on the background, we have you are talking about background and setting. Let's hear more about Madame Yoko. 
who was she you can see the era she lived in you understand so let's make progress she was a leader of Mende people in Sierra Leone are you getting it a leader of Mende people in Sierra Leone combining advantageous lineage shield marriage choices and the power accorded to her from the secret Sunday society. She was a notable leader. The people all embraced her. The people all loved her. Are you getting it? So she is not a fictional character. Let's know more about this woman. We are moving forward. This particular woman, now, Madame Yoko was formerly named Soma. Her former name was Soma. S-O-M-A. But she came Madame Yoko. She married three times. That is why in the first part we have shield marriage choices. She married three times in her lifetime. Yes. Banya was not her first husband. He was the last. She married three times in history. Now, you know, following Benjai's death, Benjai was the second husband. Yoko married Banya Lango. Okay? That is real story, not the book now. I'm sure you, you guys are thinking, you know, some of you say, am I not narrating the book? That's what I'm telling you. It's a historical biography. In 1875, Banya was detained by British colonial office, officials. Of course, you know that they colonized us, the, Bri the British. They colonized us. They colonized Nigeria too, you know, most of the West African countries. Banya was detained by British colonial officials in Taimawaru. Please, as funny as this name sound, you need to be able to retain them here because, of course, you know you'll be definitely discussing the background. You should be able to put it in writing. Please don't just laugh when looking at the names. It sounds strange. Yoko went directly to Governor Rowe. Of course, Governor Rowe also appeared in the text. He's a real character. Samuel Rowe was a colonial master in the 17th in the 18th and the 19th century colonial master yes you know yoko was di um went directly to governor roe to appeal for her husband's release roe was impressed with yoko's appeal and Banya was flogged and then released you can see what we saw in this book you saw how a leader an African leader. If you know African well, you, if there's one thing we don't take lightly, it's respect. We respect our traditional rulers. If you a typical African nation, we, we even we even um, reverence them more than our political leaders. You can bear me witness. We don't joke with our traditional leaders. We if you if you see when people go to visit the Oni, even when you see governors, they pull their shoes, they prostrate, they prostrate to him. You've seen it online. I've never seen the man before. But the Oni, the Alafin, the Emir, you understand? The, um, I'm, I'm here for Bios and what's your traditional leader's name? The, uh, we are our kings. We get. But how many of you saw what happened here? A leader. You saw how Banya, because he disobeyed the British colonial masters he was flogged in front of his elders he was flogged in front of his elders giving strokes of king a king was strict it was an it was a slap to africa you know when i read that particular scene i was livid guys i did not like it okay i was expecting a revenge you know and to think that this thing happened real life it's even sadder it is really sad to think that it's it's not just fiction now. It happened. It happened. It's a real life story. So let's make progress. He was flogged and then released. She went to beg for her. She was really formidable. You know, then we're in the colonial era. If our men were treated like trash, you can imagine how the women were treated. The men don't even have a voice. They were always hiding. At least the men were there to at least take the cane, take the insults. But you know. Samirore seeing a woman called Yoko coming to demand for the release of her husband, he was intrigued. Like, oh my god, are there women who are this outspoken? Who women who who 
are aware of their rights who can stand up for what they believe in he was highly impressed like okay hmm. but he has never seen that before let's make progress in 1878 following her third husband's death of course we know how he died we know how banya died yoko became the chief of senehun by 1884 she was officially recognized as queen of senehun she was first chief then she became the queen this is this is i'm not narrating this is real life events you can see how there were just minimal changes you understand all these things happened real and guess what guys we are presenting this play hope you know that don't worry the moment we come back we are presenting this play it's a beautiful play rich in our culture rich in our heritage as queen of Sen, this recognition came not only from her own people but also from the british of course they recognized her she was formidable she was resilient she was she was never going to give up she was a leader women amongst men of course you know that one thing she had to give up to become a queen was her her womb yes to be a leader you dare not have children as a woman so it means you understand she had to automatically become a man technically now to be a leader it means as much as she was female they were not going to have her perform her female duties they were not going to have a king bear children you can imagine that this is now to my ladies so they had at least she had to be like them so she dare not have a child that was why she had this bond with Geneva. You know the little girl that was kidnapped and she was framed for it. She had that bunker. She couldn't have her own child because she was a leader. She then not phantom. The thought shouldn't even cross her mind. So that is it. This is real life story. Take note of the dates. When you are discussing, you must put the exact dates. Okay, guys, let's make progress. She died in 1906, rumored to have committed suicide. Having no descendants of her own, she was succeeded by her brother Lamboy. Yeah, this part was like a blow. You know, historically, as much as Lambo was, a, of course, we are seeing one of the things, a theme of betrayal, theme of, theme of greed, ambition, greed, Lambo and Musa. Yes. On a good day, maybe if I wrote the book, I would want a little poetic justice. So I'll make sure the bad guy goes down, you know, Lambo is caught and all. That was how we saw it in the book and all. Oh, but do you know, historically, Lambo succeeded her. Yes. The same lamb boy who was rumored to have killed her husband and framed her up, succeeded her. Of course, rumors have committed suicide. That was how we also saw it in the book. She drank something and she appealed to them that let her die alone. She was a formidable leader. She was strong. She was powerful. You understand? And the people of Sierra Leone honor her till date. Honor her, they revere, they reference her. Reverence her. Are you together? As sad as the fact that Lamboy succeeded. So, this is the background of this beautiful play we have here. Let me die alone. I told you the lecture was going to be very brief. Let's make progress. Yes. Hello, people. This is my Madame Yoko. Yep. Look at her, the chief of Mende Kingdom. This is real life. This is who. This is the woman sitting down. You can see, can you see her? I know it's a bit difficult to see her eyes, but you can see how gallant she is. You could all you, you can see, I can see power oozing all over that picture. She sat down for a photo. This was a king. She was a king. I won't say queen. That was intentional. Can you see her? So that's Madame Yoko, the woman, the protagonist, the main character in this text. The people of Sierra Leone still celebrate her. I saw this picture somewhere. This was in 2008. The first annual Madame Yoko Mami Napawa Festival. You understand? You know how we celebrate some festivals here? She is being celebrated all the time. You understand? This is like a figurine of Mami Yoko. See a figurine there? They say, come celebrate and honor our beautiful, powerful, traditional women from all. Now, every powerful woman that came after her, 
we are all descendants of Madame Yoko. Maybe when they see, like in Sierra Leone, now let's assume now there was a woman, maybe um, she did a heroic act. Probably Amber Brothers came to her house and we had that. She even fought them and made sure the police caught them. She will not be given a nickname. Mami Yoko, just like because of who James Bond. That's ah, if you see him like James Bond, you know James Bond is a historical, fictional movie character. But because of what they did, it's similar to that of James Bond or Jack Barr. And you're like, that is how... But Mami Yoko is not fictional now. Strong women in Sierra Leone are addressed as Madame Yoko. You are powerful. Madame Yoko now, it means power. It means for me it means resilience it means strength strength of a woman my girls my lady should be proud listening to me so you can see this photo here national stadium in brookfield freetown they celebrate her yearly this was the first annual the 2018 but they did they have different i saw it it was a magazine cover centuries after they still respect this woman. And that is more reason why we should take this book seriously. Let me see. Do we have any other thing? Yes. This was another photo presentation. Serious Sir theater production. Yeah, there's going to be one. We are going to do ours. Let me die alone. Of course, this was the fictional character who depicted Madame Yoko. You understand? I'm just giving you a picture of how the serial Leonians, I'm sure when... Their students saw this book among why I recommended text. They were super happy because this is a woman they celebrate every day. Are you getting it? They celebrate her every single day. They will be very happy to hear that. So that is that. Okay, that is that about that. So that is Madame Yoko. Now, let's look at Nigeria. Do we have any? I'm rounding up. I'm, I'm fine. I'm done with the lecture. We are talking about this. We talked about the setting and the background. I know when I ask you a question now, you know just what to write. This are the plot summing, plot accounts. Now you know how to relate it, how to connect, connect, connect the dots. You know, cross the T's, dot the I's, you know what to do. Hmm? Now in Nigeria, I hope you guys know we also have legends. We do. Let me tell you just about one. How have heard of Enigbi, Princess Enigbi? I N I K P I Princess Inikbi. Yes. If you've heard of her, then you read what she's from um Kogi. She's a lead legend in Kogi state. You know, the Egbira people to be precise. Egbira. It's a tribe, it's a it's an ethnic group. Egbira, you know, Kogi, we have the Ogojas, the Igalas, the Egbira. Princess Inikbi is a legend. In fact, there's even a movie, Messi Johnson, um, released not quite long. Hope you know she's from that place, celebrating Princess Inikbi. Princess Inikbi, her story is one. I'm not going to tell you her story, okay? No, she was the only child of her dad. It's she's a real. It's not. It's a real story. She's a legend. The only child of her dad, and so uh, something was ravaging their community at the time, and so they had to sacrifice someone. And they said the only sacrifice is the king's daughter. And the king was not ready to let his daughter go. He said, how can he give the apple of his eyes? You know, he loved her so much. Her name was Inikbi. Please, read more about her. I-N-I-K-P-I. -I. Princess Inikbi. And so her dad didn't even want her to know. You understand? He wasn't ready to let his daughter go. But, you know, she got to know about it. I don't know how she heard it. But he, she, she has it that she got to find out why. And she told the dad, dad, let me go. I'm ready to die for my people. If it's my life that will stop this, let it be. So let it be. Come on, Dad. And the whole community was shocked that she was ready to give her life, leave her royalty to die for the people. So she died for the people of the Igbira land. Of course, they said they were fighting people of Benin Kingdom. Igbira and Benin Kingdom were fighting. So she died for the Igbira people so that the war could end. And since then, she became known as a legend. She's a hero. Every even in Nigeria, we have we have one hero I know recently, though not quite long during the Ebola period. You know, you all heard of Doctor Stella at that devil, Doctor Stella, the lady who helped us to combat the Ebola virus, and because she contracted it, she. 
died. I don't know if you know about. I hope you know that some a street, <coughs> a street was named after her sometimes last year. She's a modern day hero, <coughs> modern day excuse me, modern day legend. Yes, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the 16th century or the 17th century or 18th or 19th century. She's a modern every woman today who fight one but we are all both men and women of course for the men we have uh upper femi awolowo inamdi saamadu bello we have a lot of them even in the north they have this real queen amina of zaria yes queen amina you now know that one okay guys this is that is that about the setting and the background of let me die alone you know on a very good day if we were in class we would have started acting you know how we do it we act all our plays i would have given you guys specific roles everybody acts yes including those people that don't like to act they know themselves they always act okay it's been really awesome talking to you guys we've come to the end of today's lecture i'll be sent of course i have notes trust me there are notes for e-notes i'll be sending it to you please keep your justice whatever you wrote down your notes i would want to see it when you come okay what because my note is different from my slide to be very honest my note is different. so you should take it seriously write it down okay when we come back i would love to see all your notes and please read i'm going to send an assignment after this lecture trust me and there will be a deadline and if you exceed that deadline do not bother submitting your ca is going this is third term by October, November, you hope you know it to be your set reducing white neckle. You're almost out of here. So please take all these things seriously. Okay, guys? This is at least why I love this book is because we've gone to know about African legends. We've gone to know about Madame Yoko. Are you getting it? Wonderful name. See her, Madame Yoko. <laughs>